Okay, I'm working on a new project today for a customer friend of mine in Indiana. So we're doing, this is a York, it was a three valve valve section. And at some point someone tried to add a fourth valve, but did a, they did like a pretty dang good job throwing the holes and getting everything soldered in. But then when they went to silver solder the casing to the other casing, it warped. I'm guessing they wired on either side at, at those spanner braces to try to get them to fit. And it, it warped the casing so the piston does not fit. Actually the piston fits, but it, <laughs> it's really, really blown out. It's like way oversized. Someone attempted it, didn't quite follow it through, which is, you know, it happens. So we're gonna make a new fourth valve uh, casing, not the piston, just the existing piston. It's in fine shape, a couple dents, but you'll fill those with solder, plate this up, be able to fit it to the new piston. I won't do that. That's the customer's problem. To find someone to do it, it should do that themselves. Um, might send it to Mark, I'm not sure. We're gonna work on this. So I have a piece of material in the machine. The OD of that casing is one and five sixteenths. So luckily it's a standard size, makes stuff a lot easier. It is pretty tits expensive material though. So I'm gonna try my best not to mess it up. We got it in my three jaw here. I just center drilled when I remember to start filming. So what we're gonna do, that casing's about six inches long. So we're going to plow this big drill through only about four, four and a half at five inches ish because that's as far as we need to drill the holes. We want as much stability on our mill as possible, so we're not gonna drill all the way through right now. Let me get my uh, tripod set up and then we will um, start drilling. It's been a while since we done a, did a video, sorry. It's been really busy. We've been live streaming though, because it's a lot easier. Just kind of set up the camera and make a bell or something, whatever I'm doing. Usually on Saturdays we do that. If you're interested, we answer some questions about random stuff, things like that. Okay, so I got it center drilled. So I'm gonna probably plow through with like a 516 drill because I think that's what I have right here. And then we will uh, go with the big guy. I think it's about 9, 6, or 15 16 or something. Got a nice little long drill here. So we're gonna drill through five inches. That's what I have with my calipers here. And maybe four and a half. You wanna go nice and slow when you're drilling long holes like this. And then once we uh, do the holes and thread the bottom end, we're gonna flip this around and then pour it out from the other side as well so that we have a nice true hole. So we're not gonna go crazy deep. Okay, so that's as far as I wanna go with the 5 sixteenths. We will uh, swap out for my big drill here. So I'll make sure my drill is the right size that I'm looking for. 980, perfect. Okay, I cut out the drilling because I f***ed up the first half, but I, I flipped it around and got my part out of it. So I got a hole drilled in there about five inches. This entire piece is probably about seven inches right now. So the hole ends like bearish, which is fine because on our casing, we don't have a hole for about two inches here. So we can come back later and finish pouring that out. So basically we have one, two, three, four holes we gotta drill. Three of them are standard kind of 120 degree, one, two, three. And then the fourth one splits it. So it's a 180 off the first one. So pretty simple. What we're gonna do is, I think we're gonna go like this. So our arbor is gonna be the bottom. So I turned an arbor on here. So I gotta hold it in a 5C collet. I don't have a rotary table with a chuck. So all I have is my collet indexer which hopefully will get us through this. We're gonna kind of rig it up, get a bunch of clamps on here to hold it still and some jacks just to make extra sure. And I have a tailstock, of course. So we'll make a little plug that goes in here and the tailstock will reference against that plug. But we're gonna call my arbor the bottom because that's where we have the most clearance. I guess, no, it's the other way around. We're gonna call the arbor the top. This is an insert that gets soldered on, so that's super easy. Much easier than having a thread on. The bottom one is integral threaded, but that should be okay. I guess I could do it not integral, but I don't really care that much. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw on my blank. I'm gonna draw approximately where the holes are, and I have some um, measuring tools I can use to get the angles pretty right. Just with Sharpie, so that when I go to set this up, I kind of idiot-proof it, just to make sure I don't go dial in the wrong degree. So do that real quick, and then try to get the mill set up. I don't think I'm gonna do drill the holes tonight. We'll see. It's kind of complicated. Typically, when you're doing holes like this and round things, you don't want to use a drill bit. You want to use an end mill or an annular cutter. The tubing I have to fit in here is such weird size that if I was going to use an end mill, I'd have to come back with every hole and chase it with a boring head, which I don't feel like doing. So 
So I found a drill bit that's the right size. It's like 20 and a half millimeters. I think that's like 806, 808. And it, I think it's a little undersized by a couple thousandths, but I'll scrape it out with a scraper to get the tubes to fit. So we're gonna actually brass off the tips here so it doesn't bite in. And I think we're gonna pilot drill every single one just to be extra sure. Maybe just pilot with an end mill and then come back and finish off with this really slow, keeping a lot of pressure on. Should be able to get this pretty good. Luckily I got a reduced shank drill too for the mill. So I could probably come in with, uh, I'll, I'll use a half inch spot and I'll just go through the thing with it. Yeah, we draw out these holes, try to get the mill set up. Maybe we'll do it tonight, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> just scribed it off the bottom, off this reference, roughing this off of here. There's my connector, which is that guy. They give it like this, side by side. There's a connector, there's the up 120, and then there's the 180 which is that guy. And then there's the one other up 120. So these are just approximations so that when I'm drilling these on the mill and I have when I'm dialing in my correct angles, I know I'm on the right track. So we're gonna go over there, try to set this thing up, maybe make it. See how ballsy I'm feeling. Cause this is a $70 piece of brass. Okay, so we are here at my milling machine. I have my indexer on its ass end right now. So I'm gonna flip this guy around, try to get it set up horizontally, and we will at least get this end of it set up. I, the tail stock's in the back room, so I have to go get that and figure out if it's the right height, because I don't remember if it's the right height, so we'll see. It's kind of a shame to break this setup down, because actually I paid Andrew to set this up for me when we were prototyping bottom bearings for French horns, or rotor trumpets or whatever, rotors at least. It took him like two hours. <laughs> And we made one as the sample, so it's kind of funny. Let me give myself a little more room. So this is a pretty common, I've never done this job before. Just want to make that clear. This is the first time I've ever made a new piston casing, but these things aren't complicated. It's some holes in a piece of brass. There's no reason any repair tech could not gain the scales and the machinery to do this kind of work. And there's a lot of work out there for the, if you can do this kind of stuff. People desperate for it. And I, I frankly don't take a lot of this in because it's it's time consuming. But if, if this is all you wanted to do, there's, there's no reason why you couldn't just go out and start doing this. You know, do a good job, don't sell bad work, but you can learn on the go. For some reason this nut is stuck. Let me get a, yeah just bottomed out on the thread. Yeah, so all I'm gonna do is get this kind of rough aligned and then we'll put our material in there, get the tail stock set up and then we'll try and tram it in. I'm not really great at tramming this stuff in. And again, it doesn't really matter too much. Parts like this aren't super precise, but I'm gonna make them as precise as I'm capable of. I'm not gonna drill the holes if it's like on an angle, obviously, but like you could spend hours getting these things dialed in perfect when in reality, it's just not something you need to do. Not like life or death that this replacement piston for a hundred year old tula is 1,000% concentric. As long as the ports line up, right? That's what our goal is. Get this thing ported properly and playing. Oh, I have, uh, I have different T-nuts for this one. I thought I had a T-nut to fit this, or um, a bolt. We'll see what I got for bolts. I finally found that T-nut. And now I lost the nut. It's a T-bolt, actually. It's a bolt. I found the nut. Let me just unscrew it from this shockingly long threaded rod that, of course, as soon as I get to that end, it gets stuck. This is thrilling content. Oh, it is not coming off that end. Oh, sh**. Go back the other way. There we go. Good. Now we'll save this threaded rod for when we need it, and then I'll be pissed when I can't thread anything onto it because it's chewed up. Oh my god, where did the other nut go? I'm not f***ing with this. What did I do to the universe? Okay, whatever, I'll use a cheap nut and a cheap washer. I don't give no f***s anymore. I don't care. So a little little pro tip. You can use the table to kind of get yourself really close with your um, alignment of the thing. The base is not going to be perfectly straight, but it'll be pretty dang close like that is now. That'll get you a lot closer to where you need to be than just eyeballing it. Okay, you don't need to get super tits tight because we're gonna be bumping it around a little bit to try to get to center. And get this collet out of here, grab a one inch collet, see if we get our thing chucked up in there. If I have a one inch collet, finally found a collet. So you gotta find where the key goes. You gotta kind of like convince it to go in. There we go. There we go. There we go, then we can get a rotation. So we are gonna start, we're gonna start at zero. Everything's based off of our connector. So we're gonna get that set up like that. I think that's gonna be pretty dang rigid. We don't even need a tailstock. We're just gonna go plop, plop, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that'd be really stupid. You definitely need a tailstock for this. To go 120 from there, you go, so that's, that's 90. That's 120, which lines up with that thing. And then we have another 120. So we got the next three. That's that thing. And then we go back to the four and that's our 90. 
or, or sorry, that's our 180. That makes sense. So let me make sure it actually slots in all those because uh, these have alignment pins. So it slots in zero, slots in 120, wow. Wow, this is like the luckiest day of my life. Usually never goes like that. I like it. So we need to machine a plug. I'll do that off camera because that's boring. It's just gonna be a piece of brass that goes in there and has a center. Uh, let me grab the tailstock though. Yay, it's gonna be the right height. This is a cheap little tailstock I got with like a cheap indexer a few years ago. So I'm gonna run it all the way out and then back in a couple turns. We'll make our plug nice and long this way and then short into it so that it, we can easier get this thing in and out. We'll go like there. Sweet, just like that. So we're gonna wait until we get our uh, plug in there to get this in there proper. I gotta find more nuts too, which sucks. I found more nuts, which is good. We'll probably come back once I have it set up proper. There's really nothing much to it. And if you get to doing this thing this commonly, then you probably just leave this set up. If you're doing this type of work, I need to find more nuts. Cool, I'll come back once I have that plug and we'll get it aligned. Okay, got it all set up. Got our tailstock going. Loosen this guy off. There's our plug. So this just fits in. And of course I didn't leave enough space to get it out. Should be okay. I don't really need to break this down though. Should be all set. I have a 3 8 carbide four fluid end mill in there right now. Uh, I'm just gonna pop through the holes with that, get them started, save my drill bit a little bit. So I got it centered yi and ha in the x axis, or sorry, in the y. Because I have extra length on either side, I just have it lined up with my sharpie mark and that'll get me close enough for the y. Here goes nothing. This is the connector. So this is the, I have my measurements written out on here, is this port right here, the one that connects it to the third valve. The next step up number is 0.3. So we could go up 0.3 to this one. So that means I need to go, I just wanna make sure I think about this right. I go 0.3 that way. I'll, I'll double check that after I get this one going. Okay, first hole did good. I'm just gonna double check my thinking here to make sure I don't go the wrong direction. I don't think it would matter too much, but I just want to want to. Yeah, so I need to go 0.3 this way and 120 degrees. And then we're gonna move 300 thousandths. We're gonna make sure that's right because it's off of my Sharpie mark by a good bit. But I wanna, I wanna do some thinking to make sure that's right. If my Sharpie mark could be off, it doesn't really matter. Okay. This should be right. Because when these are finished, the hole's gonna be like that. I feel like I'm 100 thousandths shy. That's 300 thousandths though. I'm gonna do my math again. Okay, I figured out what's wrong with my math. I slipped the number in where it shouldn't have been, so I have to go an extra 180 thousandths, which is good, because that looks right then. That looks right, and now we're on my X, so we're good. Yeah, that was, that was confusing, but I figured it out. Happy I did the math. Okay, and then our next one is 120 from that, same, or same Y. This X is off, but I didn't measure this one out. So we're gonna go back to zero. And now we're gonna get the one that's, this is our starter. And then this one is 180 degrees away. This guy here, Floop. 180. There's 90, there's 180. So now I'm gonna double check this number because I think this number was affected by our other one. Yeah, that's right. So this one is one inch and 15,000, so let me double check that I said that right. 1.015, and I always have to remind myself which way to turn the dial. So 54, so 54 is the number we're watching. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 100, one inch. I need to go 15 thousandths more, 14. That number is not right. I think it's right. I'm looking at the wrong hole, that's why it looks wrong. Yeah, it's right. Okay, there's our pilot holes. So we're gonna leave it in the exact position it is. We're gonna get that drill bit in there. Okay, I'm gonna get one more thing. So I got a little stone. This is a brand new drill bit. I find it's important to uh, brass it off on the inside, people on the inside of the flute. Hey, 
Hey, that went great. I was not expecting it to cut that nice. So we're gonna go back 1.015. So we're on the right index. We're sitting at 68, so 68's our number. There's a hundred, two hundred, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one inch. And then we go 15,000, so we go two, 12, 15. Let's check out where our tip sits. Looks good to me. Okay, there's that one. There's the 120. Okay, now we go 480 back the other direction. Let's go back out a little bit. Yeah, no, let's go 50, 56 is the number. One, two, three, four. And then we go 80 thousandths from 56. Six to 50, which so we have 74, so 64, 54, 44, 34, 24, 14, 4, 76 is what we ended at. And we're back at zero. This is the first hole we did. There we go. That's a tuba casing, hopefully. I'm like 99% sure I did that right. So we'll see. Break down. There's our bushing. Those holes turned out really nice. I, I thought that would be a lot more hard fought, but that was, that was pretty easy. So let's check out how we do. Looks pretty good to me. That's, that's pretty awesome. I think that's a success, boys that's like a breath of fresh air. Okay, all we gotta do is finish. That's our starting hole, I wanted to mark that. That's pretty cool. So now we have to, um, I'm gonna have Andrew do some of the threading because my Cincinnati's broken and these are too big for the Omni turn, sadly. But yeah, I gotta get Andrew to thread the bottom, make me a top one, and then we're doing top caps for this as well. So Andrew's gonna thread the blanks and then we're gonna do them on a mandrel on the Omni turns for the profile. But the hard part's over. That's awesome. I don't know where to go from here right now. I'm shocked that drill bit did so nice.